Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. This is the day the Lord has made. It is a wonderful day, a rainy day. But it's good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Cold front <laughs> came through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're entering into that season of the year yes. where it's chilly. Yeah, that fall season. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What does the Lord say about the seasons? If they stop, <laughs> then oh man, no, we don't want them to stop. We want them to keep on going. Yeah. So, this devotional today, we're going to learn some things, get some understanding today with this devotional. The spiritual versus the natural. Because a lot of times we don't understand the antagonism that comes along with the spiritual. Okay, now, people that are in the natural, the soulish, they don't get the antagonism, do they? Right. It's when the spiritual walks in mm -hmm. that the antagonism starts. So we're going to get some understanding about that today. This devotional is by T. Austin Sparks. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you for this word today, and we do thank you that it will penetrate hearts today Lord to bring understanding and to bring revelation to bring conviction and to bring repentance to your church to those who are more walking in the soul realm Lord than in the spirit you want us to walk by the spirit in the spirit 24 7 and Holy Spirit you are faithful to check us up when we trying to lean over and get into the soul realm, you check us up, Holy Spirit. And we do pray you penetrate every heart that hears this today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Spiritual versus the Natural by T. Austin Sparks. He says, when the spiritual stands to confront the merely formal, traditional, nominal, and quote, natural, end quote, then there is going to be <laughs> trouble and, and why is that why is that it's because <laughs> I have to kind of chuckle because we've been through this lots of times in our walk it's because you know there's a set form with tradition tradition and religion and you don't mess that form up it can be in a whole group of Christians or it can be in an individual Christian. yeah it can be in a small group of Christians You'll meet this soulish, natural realm that they have a status quo that they're moving in. And then the purely spiritual will come in. The Holy Spirit now. It's not people. No. They always point to the person. But it's it's, it's the Lord. Okay. In God's people. All right. And that makes trouble. And it messes up the form. Right. It kind of blasts it. Amen. To smithereens. So that, you know... We're going to understand more about the antagonism and the things that a true believer goes through. Let me read these first three right here. Set it up. When the spiritual stands to confront the merely formal, traditional, nominal, and quote, natural, end quote, then there's going to be trouble. This is not now merely the reaction from the world. It is the reaction from religion. I would go further and say it may be the reaction from Christianity. And there it is. There it is. There it is. Amen. Because we're understanding more as time goes on. And we're, we need to understand more, especially in the time we're fixing to enter into in this nation, this world. We need to understand why the antagonism, okay? Even amongst believers. Amen. Quote believers. And you, you professed really, believers. Yeah, and you actually get it more from the professed believers yes. than you get it from the world. Well, any more, everybody practically says I'm a Christian. You right. know, And that word is flippantly thrown around. You know, everybody's a Christian, basically. Really? Not so. That's right. Not so. And the thing of the antagonism that comes in is... Flesh and spirit are not going to mix. They never will. Mm -mm. 
They are never going to mix. They right. are never going to get along. Okay? Flesh and spirit are never going to get along. Right. There's always going to be an antagonism between flesh and spirit. Even within the believer. Amen. The fight that goes on, there's always an antagonism. The flesh tries to override the spirit. Right. Okay? Amen. Amen. There's always antagonism there going on. And the spirit wants to rule the soul. Amen. And that's what the spirit of God is after. A total dying of that soulish right. realm. By the cross. Amen. 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 So... As we go along, I think we're all going to understand more about this walk and why we go through such antagonism. Amen. And, you know, you can go into a room. If you're walking by the Spirit, you're going into a room full of soulish people. You don't even have to say a word. There's antagonism rising up without a word being said. Amen. Just because the Spirit of God is walking in Amen. and breaking up that fleshly ground right exposing the falsity of it all so t austin spark says here there is a very great difference between formal traditional nominal natural christianity on the one side and spiritual christianity on the other a great deal of deliver of difference, difference. Yes, that needs to be delivered. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> a great deal of deliverance <laughs> needs to take place in the nominal. So much so that this also becomes a battlefield. The battlefield of a lot of trouble. Then he says, leave formalism alone and everything will go on <laughs> quiet, quietly. Mm -hmm. It will be nice and smooth. Okay, he says... Leave traditionalism alone, that is, the set order of things as it has always been, that framework of things as it has been constituted and set up and established by man, that Christianity which is the fixed, accepted system of things. Leave that alone and you will escape a great deal of trouble. Oh boy. And now, not only, not only in the set, in the, in the, in the organized church. But also in the individual. That's see? right. Because people have their set ways of doing things. Even in the remnant. We have our set ways. Okay. Let's, for instance, I'll just give an example. If I'm walking a certain way, I'm part of the remnant. Okay, I say. I'm filled with the Spirit. That's what I say. And I am. I know that I am. Okay. But let's just say I decide to walk in a way that's contrary to the Spirit and then convince myself that I'm still walking by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And along comes a sister or a brother in Christ and says to me, hey, and they start talking to me, and I feel this thing coming against my set order, my way, and so I, I lash out at them. See, that's what happens. That's what he's talking about. It happens in a company, and it can happen in an individual as well. Yes. So, you know, we just have to know. We just have to know. Um when we're walking by the Spirit in the narrow way, we're going to have trouble from the soulish realm, whether it be the soulish world or the soulish Christian. That's right. Amen. And that's just the way it is. So the thing is, what we need to do is pray for those people mm -hmm. that are walking by the flesh and ask the Lord to show them and exactly. deliver them from it. Exactly. And also our own selves, you know, seek the Lord and make sure we're not walking by the flesh. That's exactly right. That we are walking by the spirit. You know, when someone says something to us, you know, and this happens with me and John all the time. People are always saying stuff to us or calling us names or whatever it is. And we have to seek the Lord and ask the Lord about what these people say. And the Lord just shows us, you know, they're in disobedience. He'll say they're in disobedience or they're walking by the flesh. But but that's not true of you, John and Sharon. What Amen. they're saying about you is not true. Right. But we always seek the Lord about it. Amen. And that should be the response for everyone. That's right. We should all seek the Lord about what anyone says to us. Amen. 
But the thing is, we're going to have more of this antagonism as time goes on, even within, and this is sad, but even within those that profess to be believers of the Lord. And sometimes more so than even the world. And it's amazing to me that that can happen. But it's just the truth. You know, the Lord's calling us to a walk of self-denial. And, and a, <laughs> that is not going to flow with the flesh mm -mm, at all. That's right. It's just not going to flow, Amen. okay? It's not going to get along with the flesh at all. That's right. And so when someone does not want to deny their self, and they do not want to go the way the Lord has prescribed, but they rebel and go the other way or are disobedient, then they're in the flesh. Whether they think they're in the flesh or not doesn't matter. They're in the flesh. And their mindset is in the flesh. And so anybody that's coming in from a spiritual aspect by the Holy Spirit, they're going to rebel against it and be antagonistic against it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, see, the only thing we can do in that case is pray that the Lord open the eyes, have mercy see. on them, Amen. and let them see. That's you know, right. because we're, I tell you, it's going to be a lot more than it has been. And I know we've been through a whole lot of situations like that up to this point. But we also are not deceived into thinking it's over. Okay? That's right. We know that as time goes on, it's going to get heavier. It's going to get heavier right. as the Lord's return gets nearer. But and we just have to know that. We just have to know it right. and say, Lord, give me strength. Give me uh, perseverance and help me not to react back right. in the flesh. That's right. Exactly. Help me not to uh, react to this in a fleshly manner, but only by your spirit. Amen. But seek to bring in a truly spiritual order of things, and trouble arises at once. So we just talked in the last paragraph about, hey, if we leave these things alone, don't say nothing. You, we're going to escape a great deal yeah, of trouble. Yeah, we're going to escape a great deal. But God doesn't tend to have us not say nothing, That's does right. he? That's right. That's right. Because tends, you see people in a wrong way. You yeah. see them, and they're not agreeing with the word. They're not following what the word says. Okay, and then they're sometimes even, you know, forgetting things they said in the past, see what I mean? And you're bringing them the truth, and then you're the troublemaker. Yeah. You're the bad one, okay? You're the one that gets the antagonism. And, yeah, and he says, yeah. you bring in a truly spiritual order of things, you bring to remembrance, okay, what the truth of God's word says, right. and you're the troublemaker, yeah. okay? Trouble arises, you're the troublemaker, see? And but, then he says this, go ahead. But you can be quiet. You can be silent, even though you know things are going on that the Lord is having you address, you address, and you don't address them, and you're silent, and you're quiet, because you don't, you want to just save yourself tr some trouble. Right, but that's wrong. You can't right. do that. Right, then you're in trouble. That's right. See, because you haven't done what God said to do. That's right, because you don't show love to a brother or sister if you keep your mouth shut. That's exactly when right. When God's telling you to speak. You know, if we love someone, we've said this over and over again, if we love someone truly, we are going to speak the truth to them. Amen. We are going to try to snatch them out of the fire. Amen. We are going to do that if we truly love somebody. But he says here, but seek to bring in a truly spiritual order of things and trouble arises at once. And you are the troublemaker. The truth is that the trouble lies in the existing condition, the situation, the state. But it is only brought out by your action. Okay, what is right. that saying there? Uh, you're going to be the troublemaker, okay? When you speak out what God says to speak in the spiritual, by the Spirit of God. And the people that you're speaking to, they say, you're the one making the trouble, right. but that's not the trouble. The no. trouble is in their existing condition. It already is there. That's right. Yeah. The and just because you speaking draws it out. Exactly. See, draws it out. And you're the troublemaker. Yeah. You're the one causing yeah. all the problems. See, 
And how many times have we seen that over the years? Oh, many. So we've many times. We've seen it times. in person, and we've seen it on the internet, and we've we we've, we've seen it. Yeah. We've experienced it. You know, this is. We've seen it with the lost. We've seen it with the saved. Yeah. I'm telling you, we've seen it. We've experienced it, and we know what to do with it. We give it to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, this is interesting. This little paragraph here. Because it says the truth is that the trouble lies in the existing condition. What is that saying? The condition is already there before you ever arrived on That's the scene. Right. Okay? That's right. Amen. Before you ever opened your mouth to say a word, the condition was already there in the heart. Mm -hmm. The state of things was already there before you ever opened your mouth. But... By the action of you speaking by the Spirit of God, things, bringing back remembrance, or whatever it is the Lord has you do, then that's brought out, see, the condition has to rise to the surface, so right. to speak. It can't really, be hidden anymore. And look, at that is God's mercy that yes, it happens. It is. That is God's mercy to the people, to the person, that that's happening. God's showing them. See? Mm-hmm. You need to repent. Yeah. See, you need to turn around. Mm -hmm. And he's using the story of Elijah with Ahab from this, what we're reading here today. And how Elijah, he wasn't doing anything. He was way over there with the widow. See, he was down by the brook Cherith. It hadn't rained for three and a half years. And he comes on over to Ahab and Ahab says, you troublemaker, you troublemaker. <laughs> I mean, Elijah, see, what is Elijah? Because see, the spirit of God's in Elijah. Mm -hmm. And the people are worshiping Baal. They're afraid. They're they're walking with the devil because they're afraid Jezebel's going to kill them all. Mm -hmm. See, well Elijah comes on the scene. See, in power. In power. The power and then of the Holy he's Spirit. the troublemaker. See, you know why? Because he carried the verdict with him. That's right. Amen. That's exactly why. Amen. And that is what happens with the Lord's people as well. When you come into a situation and the Lord's having you address something. You are basically being the ambassador of the Lord going in there. You're carrying the verdict with you. Mm, that's so true. Do you see that? You're carrying the verdict with you into that situation. Mm, hallelujah. And you know the truth of God's word breaks those bonds. It can break those bonds or it can make them tighter depending on if the person repents or not mm. and agrees with the word of God or not. Amen. So this is really a very serious kind of deal. And he says here, and so spiritual men and women and spiritual ministry are called troublemakers because the two things cannot go on together. That's it. That is where Israel was. They had the traditions. They had the oracles. They had the ordinances. They had the, the testimonies. They had the forms. They had the system. They had it all. But in the days of the prophets, there was ever this vast gap between the externals and internals of life in relation with God. And that, that's where it this lies. This is the key. Just what you were saying. God is wanting his life to flow through his people yes but his people get that life all damned up with religion with religion with mm -hmm. formalism with mm -hmm. fears and doubts and discouragements and all the stuff okay all blocked up unforgiveness see yeah lack of repentance lack of coming to the lord and saying god i just pour my life out before you lack of taking up the cross they won't take up the cross follow Jesus hallelujah okay let's just give an example of when Jesus walked on the earth and the Pharisees okay what you just read they had all the traditions didn't mm -hmm. they that's right they had the oracles didn't they that's right they had the ordinances didn't they they had the forms they had the system they had it didn't they mm -hmm. but what did Jesus say it's how did Jesus describe their heart dead men's bones you see that? Mm -mm, Do you mm. see that? You can have the outward. You can have all the forms and the fancies and the ordinances and the locked into program. But the Lord says, your heart, I can see it. And the way I see it, from my view, is dead men's bones. Mm. There's no life there. Praise the Lord. And that's why you reject any life that comes in your midst. 
by my spirit. You see that? <laughs> you see how terrible that is? And how sad that is? Praise the Lord, man. But the Lord, He does not want us to have an external Christianity. Right. He wants it internal. That's what matters, what's inside the heart. You can right. say whatever you want to say on the outside and have lip service all you want. But he's, it's the Lord's not paying attention to that. You know why? Because he has eyes of fire. And he can see into all our hearts. And he sees what's there. Amen. Amen. And he says, look, I want this to be more than lip service from you. Mm-hmm. I Hallelujah. want it to be a true thing emanating from your heart, right. a true fire in your heart, a, a true, true life, love and, love love. and life. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. This is what he wants, and this is what he longs for. Amen. And then T. Austin Sparks, he says, the heart is far removed from the lips. You know, we just got through saying about mm -hmm. there was ever this vast gap between the externals and the internals and all this program traditions mm. but this is what he says the heart is far removed from the lips they don't line up in other words Amen. what's coming out of the mouth does not line up with what's in the heart the spiritual reality is not found in the formal basically traditional right. program Christianity that's right you may have it all. But then bring in the truly spiritual meaning of things and trouble begins in that very realm. Why is that? Because they don't want their program messed up. They don't want their traditions and their plans messed up. That's why. But the Lord says, let them be messed up. <laughs> let them be my plans instead of your plans. Amen. Let it be my life. My word, my direction. He says here, okay, let me read this part again. You may have it all, but then bring in the truly spiritual meaning of things and trouble begins in that very realm. It is the trouble which arises when what is external and traditional comes into conflict with something which is truly spiritual, okay? And then he says, I used the word, quote, natural a few moments ago. Of course, in quota quotation marks, taking it out of the New Testament, it means literally that which is merely soulish, what we've been talking about, of the soul, okay? It's the carnal mind. It's the carnal way of thinking, okay? So, do those two things, you know, this whole thing up to this point, those two things, the natural and the spiritual, they aren't in fellowship, are they? Mm -mm. They can't be. No. Galatians 5 says they're at war once again yeah. another. They can't be in fellowship, can they? The natural and the spiritual. They're in conflict. That's right. You're going to be in one or the other. Right. And if you're doing both, you're lukewarm. Oh, That's yeah. what Jesus he says. He says he'll spew you out of his That's mouth. That's right. You know, the Lord is calling us all to a true, fiery, full of life walk. Amen. And that's all. It's not part way. It's not putting the toe in. It's putting all of us in. Hallelujah. He's calling us all to a deeper walk with him. Amen. This is really a very good little devotional. It is important to realize how very soulish a thing can be, even in Christianity. There can be tremendous passion, tremendous earnestness, tremendous enthusiasm, tremendous arguments and conviction. And yet the thing may be far, far removed from what is spiritual. Mm. It may be another world altogether. The conflict arises between those two things. What two things? The natural and the spiritual. Amen. So see... That's what's going on today in this user-friendly Christianity, That's isn't right. it? That's right. Make me feel good. And it's the same thing happens in the remnant. Those who've come out of the organized churches. The same exact thing happens. Make me feel good. Mm -hmm. You know? Just a little circle of seven or eight people, you know? Everybody make me feel good. Yeah. And then someone comes in truly spiritual. Starts seeing things. Exposing things. Bringing the light of the truth of the gospel right into it. 
and, and it's conflict like you're arises. the troublemaker. Conflict arises. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. But see, we can't let that stop us, can we? But look, here's what happened. Here's what's happening right here. Read that part right there. Okay. When the natural man is... No, the natural mind. When the natural mind is manipulating divine things, when the natural reason has taken hold of the Word of God and the things of God, when man's own passions and interests are being served through the work and service of God, that can become the ground of a great deal of spiritual conflict and trouble. And you said you said the natural man, and then that's true. The natural man, the natural mind, okay, is manipulating divine things. Now, what and is that's that? That's what's happening. What do you think that means, right? Well, there? it means we've had this happen to us over the years, okay. People try to manipulate us into speaking a certain way. People try to manipulate us into looking a certain way. People try to manipulate us into doing things that are contrary or even not necessary, okay, to the way the Lord has us walking. You know what I mean? I mean, it might not, I mean, be some sort of a, you know, trying to trip us up to do sin, but it's just like, you know, you guys need to act like this or do like this, but, you know. So, so more people. Yeah, will more listen, people will like you. Or, yeah, exactly, blah, blah, blah. exactly. Yeah, and, no. and so, what do we do? No, but that's the natural mind of someone trying to manipulate the divine things. God puts you on a road, saints. You get filled with the Spirit of God. You get born anew, filled with the Spirit of God. He sets you on a path. That's the narrow way. And for you, that narrow way means one thing, and for us, it means another thing. But we are together in it, okay? Right. And one thing with us, the, the the natural mind always coming in trying to divide us. You see what I'm saying? And God says, no. Y'all don't. We've already learned that lesson yeah. a long, long time, time ago. ago. Well, long time ago. That thing is, is in the true body mm -hmm. as a divider. Right. And tries to divide the true body of Christ mm -hmm. in whatever way it can. Whether talking behind the back or trying to put, throw a different uh, light on something that is not the way it is. Whatever the devil can use. See, the way we're speaking right now, this morning, in this devotional, this is this is like a troublemaker. I'm telling you, it is a <laughs> troublemaker. Because it exposes what's behind yeah. the closet doors. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And God's people need to repent. That's right. That's all there is to it. That's exactly right. You know... We can't let that stop us from speaking the truth. Even if we know beforehand it's going to cause antagonism or conflict, we cannot let that stop us when the Lord tells us to do something or say something. Amen. He needs to be number one in our life. What he says is number one. Amen. Everything else, secondary. That's right. So... Let us continue on forward in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> Trouble will arise in the realm of religion and in Christian religion as such. When that is purely spiritual comes up against the fixed system and tradition of men. I'm going to read that again. Mm -hmm. Trouble will arise in the realm of religion and in Christian religion as such. When what is purely spiritual comes up against the fixed system and tradition of men. Mm -hmm. It can happen as truly within Christianity as it did between Christ and Paul and Judaism. Okay, let's just give that example. Before Paul was converted, he was coming against the true Christians, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Killing them even. And then after he got saved, him and the Lord together, the Lord and Paul were coming against Judaism. Yes. Read the next paragraph. There was the tradition, and in itself, there was nothing wrong with it. There was nothing wrong with what God had given, with the oracles and the testimony. Nothing spiritually or morally wrong. But they had become ends in themselves. Things... In themselves and the real meaning significance and interpretation of them was lost they were the things if they became the things you see that 
It was no longer the spiritual. Let me share. Let me share an example. Give an example. God tells you to do something, saints, and He sets you on a path, on a road, okay? And He wants you to go to such and such a place, let's say a homeless shelter or something, every Saturday. He wants you to go down there and minister. So you start doing that, and you see great results, and the Lord's working mightily. And this goes on for two years or three years, okay? Or it can be in families, okay? Or something's going on. Do, 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 and you're just doing the Lord's work. And then one day the Lord says, stop. Don't go down there. But you say, Lord. Lord, that's your work. I got to go do that work. Okay? And this is where Paul was at. Paul was zealous for the word. Zealous for the truth. Zealous for the way of Jehovah. Okay? He's protecting the interest wrong. of God. Wrong. Right? He's protecting the interest of the temple. He thought. Right. Exactly. Oh, he was so true in his own <laughs> mind and heart. And, and, and But when he met Jesus on the road, he found out he was in a bad way. He got okay? a true conversion that's right true conversion filled with the spirit of god then he began to come against that which was only formal right see right, formal right, right. see so if you're in a way god told you to go to the homeless shelter and you go and then the lord says now stop going so you stop going see you're still in the way you're still in the way with the lord but if you rebel against the lord then you're you're doing disobedience see even yeah. though it's a good thing even though it's 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 you know looks right and proper God tells you don't do that. Mm -hmm. See? You better you, not you do it. You can really mess things That's up right. because then if you're going against what the Lord says, stop, don't go there anymore. Right. Then you go anyway, then you're like going out of yourself. Right, exactly. That's really what That's it is. That's right, exactly. You you're getting it. into the soulless realm now. That's is it. That's See? it. See? Amen. And there's problems when we do that kind of <laughs> Hallelujah. thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and then the Austin temple, the, yeah, T. Austin Sparks, he is saying, the temple was the thing. With God, it was not the thing. It was only a sign of something else. Mm. See, I think of that, and I think how people are about going to a building. And they really made that building a thing, haven't they? Mm. And a lot of them have made it an absolute idol, haven't they? Mm -hmm. That's the temple, man. That's the church. That's the <laughs> building. Well, what does the Lord say? He does not dwell. In buildings made with hands. Amen. What did he say, y'all? That's right. Okay, he said that, right? That's right. Okay, so right here. And he's right. They had made the temple the thing. They had made the temple the idol, man. That's right. That's well, that's right. not what it was with God. No, it was just a building pointing to Jesus. It was a sign of something else. Amen. See, something in the future of what the Lord is saying. We are the temple of right. God. Right, exactly. When and Jesus came, Jesus said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. And he, he identified right there. He said, I'm the temple. I'm the temple. And then after he rose from the dead and filled the apostles and everybody in the upper room got filled with the Holy Ghost and those that got saved, they became the temple. And why didn't they get what he was saying? They didn't get what he was saying because they weren't spiritual. That's right. They weren't walking in the spirit. That's right. And so they were looking at and listening to what he said in total natural, soulish life. That's right. And so they were like, what do you think you're saying, man? You know, they didn't get it. That's right. They didn't get it because they weren't thinking spiritually. That's right. And so we go over all the whole gamut, all the whole gamut of what we've just said. The things, the forms, and the means were everything. And it was criminal in their eyes to say otherwise. Oh. To give any other interpretation than the historical and traditional. And it's the same today, isn't it? They will literally treat you as a criminal when you come against their system. Mm -hmm. I mean it. That's right. Like you are just the criminal of all ages because you have come against their tradition and their form and you've walked in and blasted their little party all to pieces. That's right. But see what the Lord is in his mercy. He wants to blast your little party all to pieces. That's right. In his mercy, he does. In his grace, he does. Amen. Because he wants to get you in the right way. That's right. It's what he's saying to these people. Right. He wants to get you in the right way. 
in a true form, in a true relationship with Jesus Christ, where you don't have to have everything in a box. Amen. There's freedom That's by right. the Spirit of God. The ever-expanding Christ Jesus, the universe and all of its parts, He can just do through you what He desires to do. Amen. Hallelujah. And isn't that wonderful? And if wonderful? your family don't like it, if your mama don't like it, or your daddy don't like it, or your children don't like it, well, they can just take a hike it. Okay? You see what I mean? Because okay. you're going on with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See? But too much. We, we're held back by the natural. We're held back. Well, mama doesn't like that, or daddy don't like that, or my brother don't like that, or my kids don't like that, or something. Or out of and human were, compassion. Right, out of human compassion. Yeah. We're held back mm -hmm. by the formalism, by the traditional mm -hmm. family. We're held back by all this other stuff. When Jesus said, hey, my word, I'm sending it forth to bring division. His word, his That's truth. That's right, and See? it does. And it does, in every realm, it does. It does. You get along at work. You go to work and you get along but when you when they find out you're a christian you'll start getting little attacks you know from people that aren't christians because they're trying to make you angry they're trying to make you mad just stay focused on the lord just stay focused on the lord and watch it'll get worse and worse and worse either but you keep focusing on the lord and before but you, you know peace. it yeah before you know it that evil will start moving out the lord will take that person and move them out the door over there to another department or even another job take that person and move them out over there see god is so faithful to protect his own if we stay focused on him amen amen hallelujah he says here in that is where they fell out with paul the pharisees and the sadducees he had come to see the meaning of things he had advanced from the things to the meaning and they had not Therein lay the conflict and the trouble. And not only the Pharisees and Sadducees who were lost, but those Judaizers within the faith, they were mad at Paul because he wasn't telling people to be circumcised. He wasn't telling them to keep the law like Moses had given at Mount Sinai because Paul had seen that the law is written in our hearts. And then he wrote in Galatians, what did he say? If you have yourself circumcised, you have fallen from grace. Okay. And there's really a bull right down to that, doesn't it? You're going to walk by the Spirit, or you're going to walk by the flesh? One or the other. Which one is it going to be? Mm -hmm. And if I'm walking by the Spirit, I'm going to receive the things of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Coming from you, my wife, coming from brothers and sisters in Christ who are giving me of the Spirit of God. If I'm walking by the flesh, and then you come with the Spirit of God and try to give me something, what happens? Mm -hmm. huh? Conflict. And conflict. <laughs> conflict. And God says no to that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's why... We maintain our prayer life by the grace of God. We walk with the Lord. We seek the Lord. And we walk by the Spirit together mm -hmm. as one. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Beautiful. You know, this is just a wonderful little devotional here because, you know, people think they can be in fellowship and walk side by side, flesh and spirit. Not so. Right. Not so. You're hurting yourself if you're doing Not that. Not so. And if that's happening in a person's life, there is something gravely, gravely wrong. Because we cannot have fellowship that way. Right. Amen. Not a true believer. <coughs> and we cannot, you know, what does the Lord say? How can two not agree... Basically, and how can two walk together yeah. if they agree? Yeah. yeah, and so how in the world can you walk in agreement with the soulless realm? You can't. You can't. Amen. And so it's going to be one or the other. Amen. And I believe God is calling people today with this message. It's one or the other, guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Go ahead, honey. Pray. Thank you, Lord, I thank you for this little message. I thank you for your penetrating heart lord Very mercy and thank grace you, and i thank you for that and i pray lord that you will seal this message to the hearts of people and that you will let the seed be planted very deeply and let the roots go downward and all the fruit be born above hallelujah from you lord a great harvest yes I pray. yes and I thank you, Lord. I pray that you touch each and every person listening to this message. And you will not let them forget this message today. 
that you will bring back to their memory over and over again this message. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you'd like to contact us, you can contact us at Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Hallelujah.